Hello, everybody. Welcome to the official William Steele True Crime Podcast and True Crime Channel across the board. This is William Steele, and I've been blessed to star an inmate to roommate on A&E. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I can't give you any spoilers, but it shot up it shot up in the ratings, and I'm humbled, and I'm still using this platform right here. Please subscribe to tell inspirational stories of transformed lives and uh, the, you know the perils that exist in our society. And uh, in keeping with that, you know, I always have guests on that are going to have something positive to share. I try to run a great, clean channel. I don't get into all the gossipy, you know, back and forth between people in different groups. And, uh, you know, I was on a show with somebody the other day, and I said it's very, very important, like all these mob guys that are retired or whatever, changed their lives, um, to give them a shout out, thank them for their, you know, to come on. Because if they were telling these stories 20, 30 years ago, they'd be killed, basically, you know. Mm -hmm. So we give a shout out to them. Thank you for coming on these shows. And, uh, and the other guests that I've had. So one of my, uh, my, my regular guests has been incredibly a retired federal law enforcement agent, uh, mostly with ATF, 26 years federal law enforcement, Ignacio Esteban, who's joining us today. Ignacio has written in just about a year that he's been retired, approximately 60 books. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, and many of them he offers free. So I'm going to let him break that down, how all that works. And today we're going to be talking about the uh, tire... Nichols, how do you pronounce his name? Yeah, Tyree. Tyree, Tyree Nichols. Tyree Nichols. Excuse yeah, me yeah. to the Nichols family. But uh, yes, and this is a case that's outraged many of us who've been through mm -hmm. the system. I've been arrested more than once. I've had hand, uh, police put their hands on me more than once when they weren't supposed to. And back in the day, my day, there was no cameras everywhere. So you can't prove a damn thing. So you just, you know, you deal with <laughs> it along with life. Anyway, so with that said, Ignacio, thank you once again for being on the show. Bill, thanks for having me, man. I enjoyed going on your show and talking to your audience and uh, your listeners. We appreciate so they it. can see what and current events and things that happened in the past and get some more information that can be useful in their lives, for sure. We certainly appreciate it. Now, for, now for anything I left out about your background and what brought you to write books today, um, if you want to give a little more on your background, perhaps, and what led you to start writing books, and then we'll dig into this case. Um, yeah, I yeah, yeah, for, for sure. Now. I've written... It's been a little over a year now, and uh, I started writing books because I, I got really uh, – I'm also very political, right? I, I have a bachelor's degree in political science and history. I was studying uh, my master's in international relations at FIU. And ever since I can remember being small, I've since uh, – I think the first election I could remember was when Ronald Reagan beat Jimmy Carter in 1980, right? right. And, and, and I became a, a young uh, Reagan uh, uh, Republican, and I've been watching him. Uh, politics and my, it, it's in my DNA pretty much. My family came from uh, Cuba. My grandfather was also a politician, very anti Castro, right? Uh, very anti the revolution, what happened. They lost everything. And that never, you know, sat well with me seeing they had to struggle with my grandparents who, who he did well in one country, didn't speak the language, great nation took, took on my family. And that had an impact on me. I spent a lot of time with them. And, and within one generation, like I said, you have your education. They can never take your education away from you. You can't take your ambition away from you. No government can take anything that you have that you earn. They can take your money, but you can always start and do other things. Right. That's an inspirational story. That's the greatness of this country that you can do that. One generation, I have done better than my family had done in, in Cuba. And uh, that's how great this country is. And, and now I'm fortunate enough. I retired at age 50, 26-year uh, law enforcement. Now I've been writing books, doing these shows. And now I'm working on screenplays to have my life. You can see the poster behind me, ATF Undercover, which is my autobiography, uh, hopefully made into a TV series or to a movie. And so th those are the things we're going at and what we're doing here. So, yeah, I, I got through politics. Then I went my background to law enforcement. All my books are on Amazon on, and they're and they're free if you're a Kindle unlimited subscriber. And now I'm taking an extra step and I'm getting all my books down on Audible. I'm starting my ATF Undercover book. So soon enough, if you're big into listening, you'll be able to listen to my books also. So you can go digitally or you'll soon be able to listen to my books that are coming out soon. So that's exciting for me, for sure. And hopefully you'll be able to see something out soon uh, when next a year or so a TV series based on my life. So we'll see. We exciting look, things. <laughs> we look forward to it and future collaborations with you, as a matter of fact. Thank please, get, please, guys, everybody, go to the description when this is over and order this man's books. They're incredible. There are so many topics of cases that he either worked on or has intimate knowledge of from insider in law enforcement insights that you've never heard before so and, 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 if you, and if you want more information look at our shows we, we have done like four or five shows right. and we talk about a lot of good stuff between ms-13 the, the uh, dc snipers 
We talked a lot about that. I was out there for that case. That was an enormous case, the Beltway Killers, Mohammed and Mavo. Uh, we, we've talked about politics, Biden, China, Russia. I mean, we, we, we've we covered all. And you go to his uh, True Crime channel, you'll see that. And then if you want more, you can find me on YouTube. Type my name. I've done over 60-some shows, and you can see a lot more things. So please enjoy and, and watch it. Okay. Now, with that being said, you know, please hit like and subscribe if you like what you're hearing so far. We, I'm going to jump into this case of police brutality leading to the death of, a, you know, Tyree guy, Nichols. Tyree yeah. Nichols. He was essentially kidnapped out of his car and moved to location. Oh, that's horrible. Horrible beating. Now, let's, let's uh, you know, for full disclaimer, I've done over 18 years in prison for nonviolent charges, and I was a victim more than once, one big time of police brutality. Could never prove it. There was nothing could be done. It was a different era back then. Now, Ignacio, coming from federal law enforcement, has seen these cases. And, you know, I, I don't know. Back then, I'm sure he, he probably couldn't stand the guys that were corrupt and beating up people because it would make his life worse. Because now he encounters, I would assume, you know, criminals are doing wrong who, rather than surrender, might want to get back at you for what happened to them in another case. So yeah. tell us from your perspective, what the hell happened in Memphis, Tennessee, that this man ended up dead? And I think it was six officers have been arrested. What happened? Five have been arrested, and and there was like eight total that were involved. I think the other three now have been suspended. Uh, there could be more charges against them, and even the first responders, the uh, the paramedics, they just two of them just didn't do anything. They didn't, never treated him. It's unconscionable. Uh, he just laid there on the ground. So let me start from the beginning, so, so your audience can understand in case they haven't seen it. And you can go and go to YouTube or any other platform and type in Tyree Nichols right? Memphis beating, police Memphis beating. Right. And you can see, because remember now, the police have these body cams, right? And, and it's supposed to be recording all interaction. They're supposed to. Sometimes the cameras don't work or they have issues, but th that's the beauty of today's law enforcement as opposed to years ago. Now, they say one thing, but the video shows something else, right? Because that's not what they're saying after when you see the video, what happens. So allegedly, they say he was involved in a traffic. This is January 7th of this year. And he would die three years later because of, of this encounter. Three three days later. Three days three later. Days later he'll be right. dead. He'll be dead. Three days. I saw, I saw the several angles of the clip. There was one camera angle from a building, and then there were several body camera angles. Oh and my gosh, you gotta see them all. They were kicking his head like it's a softball. Yeah, now, I, don't me, much, I don't know how much YouTube will let me throw up here, but from public record, and because we're doing a news and journalism service here as well. Sure. Educational. Uh, right, educational. We're allowed to show clips. Um I don't know. I'm relatively new at this. We're going to try to see if we can't play one of those clips during this interview sometime. If right? you can, if you can show the clip of them from, from the camera when he's getting the beatings, or getting kicked in the head when they're standing him up. So let, let me tell him the story there. Yeah. So allegedly he's involved in some sort of traffic violation, right? Reckless driving is what they're saying happened. But you know when it's, when it's a traffic stop, and, and this is a you. You broke this up. Is that, uh, Terry Nichols is a photographer. He also has a, a young child. He, he is not involved in gangs. He's not a violent person, right? He allegedly, he maybe makes, a, a, a guess, a, a certain turn that they didn't like or something, and something gets out of control. Where When it's a traffic stop, I, I think most of our encounters are, hey, let me see your license registration. Let me talk to you. What's happening here? You run the, the tag. It starts off with a video, and the, the Scorpion unit, which is for hardened gang violent criminals, right? This right. is a street unit that specializes on this. They're not, it's not traffic. Okay. Yeah. Traffic stop. They pretty much go in there and they use every expletive they can. They grab them out of the car, throw them to the floor, traffic stop, traffic stop, throw them to the floor. He's saying, what's going on here, man, using a lot of force. They're yelling and screaming at him. They're, they're struggling. There's five guys and they're really being nasty with him. And he says, Oh, you're not giving your hands. We're going to tase you. So they bring out the taser and they're about to tase him. He gets up. And he starts running, he has a sweater on, and he's able to take off his sweater, but it's getting tased and escapes right. because obviously a taser, the prongs don't go all the way through because the sweater, he can't charge him. So he's able to throw him off. And I've been tased before. And trust me, if it gets you, you feel it. And it's absolutely, if you, if you ride it, it is five seconds of pure pain. And you can't move. You're incapacitated. You're like this, tighten up. It stops, but you feel it. But obviously he had a sweater. It's hard if you have baggy clothing, really, with the prongs to go through. And he had that. And he threw, takes off his shirt. And you can see the video. He starts running. And one of the officers goes, oh, man, I'm going to stomp him. In other words, they're now 
livid. They've, right. they've gone off a roll. And, 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 and use of force is you use the amount of force you need to arrest somebody, right? You handcuff them. It gets out of control. So the next video you see is from the uh, the pole cam, I guess, that's up there. And it's right on the corner there and that intersection. And next thing you're seeing, he's on the floor. These guys got him. And now they are kicking him in the face. I mean, that's some of the serious kicks he gets in the face, oh, yeah. in the body. He's getting hit hard. I, one of the other officers comes in. They're spraying him in the face. With, and I've had that pepper spray too. Pepper spray in your face, man, irritates you. And it's hard for you to comply when you're in this much pain because some yeah. of the officers, I guess the wind have pushed back and they get in their faces and you see the other button camps are walking around coughing and they're in their, in their feeling, and they're professionals and they're feeling the impact. So this poor guy can't comply because he's got all that stuff going on. And then they, they lift him up and they hold his hands back where they're saying, give me your hands. Well, he can't because you know, you have, he's in the middle and 12 are on the side, they're holding him and they're walking around in a circle while one guy comes in and punches him in the face every time. Boom. 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 While they're holding his hand. And they just keep on punching him in the face. And you're going to see him, sir, sir. Boom. And they just keep on punching and punching and punching and punching. And, pu and just, it's hard to watch. It really is hard to watch because you know how this is. Like, it was more like a gang a, a beat down initiation than it was a, a nonviolent traffic stop for a ticket. I mean, it, it, it's a law enforcement investigation. You can't justify any of that because, first of all, he, he was he, he he's he's just getting it, it's pretty much a, a you're right gangsters they, they they became thugs and gangsters with badges and guns right and and that's unfortunate because it gives law enforcement a black eye once they had him in control they put you have to make sure you stay measured and don't get overwhelmed by your emotions because if that happens then you become like them right the whole the whole idea is you're professional you're trained for this my job is in here if you're resisted you cause me problems I'm gonna handcuff you but who's gonna give you the punishment is to judge. You don't get street punishment. That's not what we do. That's not the society we have. That's not what law enforcement is about. It's about, it's about when I did my cases, I'm, you know, you'll arrest you, and then you're going to get punished in the federal system. You'll get a lot of time, and then you'll, you'll feel the punishment when you get incarcerated. But to go in there and say it's going to be street justice, and this is what we're going to do to you. And then one guy brought, brought out the ASP, which is a baton, and he starts hitting him. So in some ways – you compare Rodney King. I think this is a lot worse than Rodney King. Oh, absolutely. When we see Rodney King lived, right? Yeah. This, this kid is dead. Worse. This guy, I think, is 29 years old. Yeah. Done. His life every is time, over. Every time he was collapsed on the floor from the seated position, they would prop him back up. I think he'd keep hitting him. And uh, he was, at one time, he was crying for his mother. Mom, mom. Yeah, mom, he was mom. Crying out. Mom lived a block away. He, he was coming home. Mom, mom lived a block away. He was hoping she could hear him. Uh, and, and, and he, and he and like he said at the beginning, man, you guys are using a lot of force, man. What's what's going on here? What did I do? What did I do? And, and, and then later you can hear the guy say when the sergeant shows up, like he's looking at this guy and says, what happened here? And, and, and they're telling him some, what, what's going on. He said, oh, yeah, he he, uh, he, he, tr he tried to take a swing at me and he reached for my gun. None of that's on camera. <laughs> None of that's on camera. It, it, this guy there. That, that's why these guys got charged. And I give the chief credit. I give the prosecutor credit. They moved quickly. He died. He, he, and then he lays her, like I said, none of the officers, they handcuffed him, give him any medical attention, which is a big no-no. And then the paramedics show up, do nothing, and just watch also for like seven, ten minutes. Big problem there also. Those guys I, also got fired. My, um, my, my speculation is people like this, the Scorpion Squad, they're going yeah. after the worst of the worst. They're not like you guys, like like Hyder, for example, that's very well trained to deal with violent offenders. And you, you have them overwhelmed. These squads have some of the biggest officers to overwhelm somebody, but not to beat them down, you know. And That's not the whole idea. So and, I, think, I think, you know, all this crap about defund the police, you know, if anything, you know, as a former criminal, it should be better training and better uh, non-lethal equipment, but no more bigger numbers necessarily. But yes, the right. training and the caliber of people that you hire. Oh, yeah, better. Yes. These, these guys I heard were, were not at the caliber they wanted to, but they need to fill some numbers. So that's, that's a problem, too. And, and you see these guys. This, this kid's a skinny kid, right? These guys are bigger guys. I'll muscle him. He outran him. He embarrassed him, right? These guys were out of shape because they, were, they couldn't breathe. They, were, they weren't really well. And these guys were huffing and puffing. Uh, they couldn't one, I think a couple chase him because of what? You broke up for a split second there. Yeah, he outran him. This kid was oh, faster than them. They, right. they're, they're not as good shape, right? And, and then when they get? finally caught him, they, he, you hear these guys breathing heavy. They're, they're out of shape, and, and and then of course the, the, a lot of these guys were limping. So that that tells me 
they, they already blew up their knees and had issues. So they're, they're already not in great shape for that kind of job. You have to be in great shape, better shape because you're teeling. And, I, and I've done this some, I think I told you the story when, when I was part, when I first started with ATF, I went to the Tampa Police Department in a jump out unit, similar to this, right? Yeah. How you cut your teeth and, and you, you got to keep your wits about you. Don't make it personal. This is a job, right? You're there to put them away and serve and protect. That was nothing. I don't know what that was, but that was not policing. And it, I want you to know that. That is not policing. After dealing with so many, so many gang members, a lot of them in the streets who act like exactly like that, you know, they're, they're, I, I would assume, I'm not a psychologist by any stretch, but mm -hmm. just being pretty street smart and, you know, and street wise and had been to prison for so many years, I think they eventually probably took on the mentality that they're the baddest gang in town because they, yeah. they can run around legally armed, all the backup they want, and therefore nobody's going to defy them in any way, shape, or form. You know, I, I, there was a way to deal with that. Now, I know from even back in the day, they stopped high-speed pursuits in they a did. lot of cities that were nonviolent pursuits. And I used to capitalize on that because I had high-speed chases. I would take them by Fort Lauderdale Airport because they generally couldn't put a helicopter up near an airport. And I would try to lose the police around, yeah. <laughs> around the airport. But, and I, I would just keep going. If it was nonviolent pursuit, if I had done a burglary or they just recognized a stolen car I was in, I'd outrace the cops. Many, many times. Even if it's a violent person, sometimes they rather catch you later if they know who you are right. than you crash a car and kill family. You're right. How many, right. How many times have they gone through uh, the, the you know the, the bad guy has gone through the intersection and hit a car full of kids or something going? Yes, to or, it happens a lot. So they don't want that. Right. They don't want that. That's that's not worth it. Serve and protect. This our tax dollars serving the citizens of the community. Right. Yeah. You got to be smart. You got to remember that none none of this, and I always remember that belongs to me. And obviously now this is my career with, with what I'm doing with books and everything. But when I was an ATF or customs, you know, I, I serve or a public servant, right? So you're here to help and uh, do my job. And at the end, you go home. That's the key. Go home and make sure it's done safely and do the best you can. Th these guys really did the opposite. They, they disgraced themselves, their family, the department. It's a black guy for law enforcement, black guy for Memphis Police Department for years to come. People are going to be seeing this video. It goes up there with the Rodney King video for LAPD. And, and some of the other atrocious ones. It goes up there with Uvalde too in Texas, right? That's a, a failure to act. Having the kids, we've talked about that. And, and mass shooting, you, it's it's two prongs. You have guys who don't want to act, who don't do the job. It happened also in Parkland, Broward County Sheriff's Office, right? The resource officer who failed to go in there to go after Cruz was he's killing on, the kids. He's on video peeking around the corner, but he never bothered going in. He, the teachers are, are dying, saving their students' lives. The football coach tries to tackle him. He gets shot with AR. Right. Or, that, that and uh, he sits in the back. Well, he has at least a weapon. He can do something. Uh, I'm sorry. Th those are acts you keep on seeing. And so well, those are I, issues we have in law enforcement: guys who overact, overreach, and guys who do nothing when it's time to do something. We're definitely going to have you on to get into more of your solutions. We've been meaning to have you on to discuss that because I have some ideas of somebody you know coming out of that lifestyle that would actually work. And I think we're on the same page on some of them. Um, yeah. But I, I just want to share a personal experience. You know. Back in uh, 2000, you know, I, I was in South Florida. I'm not going to go into the town or anything, but I was literally out heading east in, in the morning sun in a French truck that had a stick shift. I was learning how to drive stick. I didn't have to drive stick. And I didn't know it, but I'm on Sunrise Boulevard down Fort Lauderdale. And police officer somehow that I passed noticed a little crack in the guy's windshield of the truck that I was driving. And I turned off to a side street and I was, on, you know, stop signs. And I was struggling, you know, to, to figure out how to drive this stick, you know. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know this guy was behind me. He had turned over behind me. Oh, boy. Me off to warn me or ticket me about the crack in the windshield. You have to X amount of time to get it fixed or whatever. I didn't even see him behind me because the sun and I was focused on shifting and, and stop signs one after the other. And uh, so finally I noticed him, you know, he just has his lights on, his sirens, you know, but not his loud sirens, you know. So. I pull over and I'm kind of freaked out. I'm like, oh, man, I'm, I'm in some trouble. I don't know how long these guys has been back there. And I went to get out to talk to him, and he thought I was trying to run, and he ran me with the police car. Oh, and boy. It, it pretty much banged up my leg, cut it open on the shin. You know, I, I say broken, but really just to the bone. And it was just split open right to the shin, hemorrhaging blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, the open door is in my bone of my leg like this, but right into the bone, uh, the open truck door. And his bumper is like kind of wrapped. It was like a rubber bumper, like for pushing vehicles or something. And that was kind of having me jammed right there. I couldn't get out of the spot. He comes out at gunpoint telling me, get on the ground, get on the ground. I said, you just broke my freaking leg. What the hell did you run me over for? 
You know, yeah. and I'm like, I'm like, I'm really like frantic because I thought my leg was broke. And uh, right. he says, get on the ground. I, I said, look, I'll do whatever you say. Back your car up. You, 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 I was getting out. You're pinned, right? Yeah, I was just going to, because you're supposed to wait in the car and all this stuff. It's hindsight's 2020. But I was going to just go ahead and address him and really, hey, I'm really sorry, you know, because I like to handle things, nip him in the bud. In the end, he said, oh, I thought he was going to run and all this nonsense. But uh, so he's, he's got me a gunpoint. That's not working. I, I said, I'm not getting on the ground. I'm not going to tear my own leg off. Back your car up. I lay down. So he starts hitting me with pepper spray. The first thing he did after he couldn't get me down. Oh, yeah. You got sprayed. Yeah, that, that's not pleasant. I've had that too. I'm trying to remember the sequence because this is you know, a long time ago. Okay, the sequence, he tries to grab me and just pull me down, right? Mm -hmm. While he's doing that, I grab his collar. Well, that's not the thing to do. To a police officer when they're trying to arrest you, <laughs> you no, they, know, they want you to comply. Hands, yeah, for yeah, sure. I got, I got charged with like you know something with like a battery on law enforcement just for touching this guy. They dropped that charge later because they realized what he was trying to do was I was going to get a worse injury if I didn't. I was just trying to stabilize myself. I wasn't trying to hurt this guy. I was trying to comply. So, uh, but so he finally uh, couldn't get me out. He's officer needs assistance. He's on his little mic here, and I'm like, officer doesn't need assistance. Just back your car off me. <laughs> you, you know, you're hurting me. You, you know that means bad news for you. Oh, so after yeah. assistance, that means more's coming. More's coming your way. In Florida, ten thirteen. So now he he uh, pulls out the pepper spray, hits me, and all that. Can't get me down. I'm all screwed up. I eventually kind of tear my leg free. About the same time, his partner drives up on the scene, and all pretty much at the same moment, it's like a blur. There's no body cameras. There's no in two thousand at that time in Fort Lauderdale. There was nothing. To record this if there was i they, these guys would be in prison i would have never did all this time so he gets me on the ground and at the same time i'm trying to get to the ground worrying about my leg and he cuffs me up and he puts his knee in my back grabs the cuffs in the middle of my back and loads up you know he's one of these big buff officers and proceeds to just hit me one time and broke mm. i think it was two or three ribs i couldn't breathe i was pepper sprayed he's got me on my belly so i have a stomach Positional asphyxia. You have a risk of. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I'm screaming. I can't breathe. I can't breathe, man. Please get off me. And I'm gasping. And he, you know, and he's like, sound like you know, sounds like, sounds like George Floyd. Yeah, real sarcastic. Telling me sounds like you're breathing pretty good to me. You're able to yell at me. And I was like, just barely getting the breath out anymore. I was starting to fade out. I was pepper sprayed. He broke my ribs. His knee was still in my back. Eventually, he got off, and I gasped in the air, which was pepper spray also, which made that worse. And then, uh, you know, I went through the whole system and they overcharged me with the case. And then they eventually realized what really happened and started downfiling everything. And I, and I had to take a plea. I had no choice. But I took a plea to 10 years and I escaped from that. And I got another 15 years consecutive. Oh, wow. That's a lot. So these cops beating the hell out of me. I ended up spending a 25 year sentence, which I served probably 18 something years on all that altogether. It all stemmed from that incident. Now, I was no angel. My audience knows what I did. I was, you know, you told me. Yeah. I was no angel, you know, but uh, this incident, man, I didn't bring it on myself. And so I know they do what they do. I know another there, one. There's, there's, there's bad cops, unfortunately, and, and they give the good ones a bad reputation because people are thinking, oh, these guys, it's, it's a black guy. Just like what these guys did, the Scorpion yeah. Squad, which has now been dismantled. And hats off to the Memphis chief. She did a good job moving fast and really moved really quick on this and got the action they needed. Have these guys. And now they're going to be looking at 25, 30 years, maybe more. Yeah, we're going, to follow, there goes. we're going to follow this pol uh, police brutality case closely. We do support law enforcement despite the fact that I was in prison. We need the police. If yeah, somebody's yeah. breaking in your house and your mother's in there alone or you're in there, you, you, you'd like the police to show up and deal with it. You and, know, and, and, and don't expect the police to show up. And I'm always an advocate of defend yourself, protect yourself, independent, be resilient. We're independent, resilient people. Have your firearm be ready to stand your ground and stop the threat because if you expect the police to come and save you, call 911, it's not going to happen. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen, especially now. They're, they're afraid to, you know, half of them are afraid to respond because you get and, and, if they, and, and if they do respond, they may think you're the, you're the bad guy. So right. be careful. And then sometimes that happens a lot. The homeowner that calls ends up being shot, being confused that they were the home invader. What's your quick advice for my audience, inmate to roommate, and William Steele true crime? If you get pulled over, give a, a minute synopsis. What is somebody required to do in this country or does it vary state by state? I believe it's like make sure I, they can I, I would I would tell people <laughs> turn your lights on if it's daytime, nighttime inside so he can see. Make sure you roll down your windows, right? And put your hands on the stern wheel. 
and be very respectful to the officer right. and just say, yes, sir. No, sir. What do you need? Okay. I'm going to reach out here. If you have a firearm in the car or on you, make sure you tell them it's right here, sir. Bump. And I have a concealed weapons permit. Uh, it's a, a middle council. It's in the glove box. Uh, my gun is with my, my registration, my insurance information. So you know that if you want to go reach out for it and, and, and just be compliant, be respectful. And most of you'll have a good, not a problem. But if you start doing things and you make it nervous, you have your hands in your pocket and if something comes up, that's one because the hands is what you ha you look at and the hands can kill, right? With the I weapons. I think more police get killed in, in car stops and domestic violence incidents than anything That's else. very dangerous. You don't know what you're dealing with. You don't know. Both of them are very dangerous situations. So. I, I have always handled it exactly that way. Even when I was doing illegal stuff and had illegal things in the car, you know, 20 years ago, whether it's jewelry or guns or whatever, mm -hmm. cocaine. And uh, I always was, oh, yes, sir, you know. You know, what do you need? You know, and I keep my hands visible, but I would also volunteer. Like if I, if I did something wrong, look, I understand I'm going to get a ticket. You know, I rolled that stop sign. You know, is that what you pulled me over for? If you kind of come clean like that, usually they're like, okay, you know, I'm going to give you a warning. Are you drinking? Are you high or anything? No, mm -hmm. sir. Well, I'm going to give you a warning. I just really cut, cut to right to the chase. If I think I did something, you know, that I'm not going to get searched for and I'm in a legitimate car. I just come clean right immediately. That's <laughs> the best advice. Be respectful. Right. And if you start copying an attitude, then it's going to go downhill for you. It's right. going to go really bad. I've yeah. been in prison with they, you know, they tell these war stories. Yeah, I get pulled over. I tell the police, man, he got no business pulling me over. You know, he won't let a mother effort go home, going home, man. Meanwhile, they open the window, it's pot smoke. And smoke. A, yeah, that, that's gonna, you know? <laughs> no, that's not going to be good for you. It's not going to end up good. Thank you for joining us on this show about this police brutality issue. We're going to have absolutely. You we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Hopefully, we'll see the time these guys get, and hopefully, more arrests are made and right. uh, and accountability and 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 has to be, um, you know, that's the key lesson learned. There has to be account. Uh, last night, State of the Union, the family was there. President Biden addressed them, the the, the mother and the and and the and the father, and she says, hopefully, good things, something positive comes out. Oh. Out of okay. this, something in every profession, oh. there has to be accountability. Can you read that quote on my screen? Is it big enough to read on your end? Injustice, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Martin Luther King. And I took yes. a course on his. Oh, speech. okay. Yes, when I, I can see prison, it. When I was in prison, I took a course in, uh, on Martin Luther King on his speeches. The book was like this big from Washington Lee University, and so this really applies in a situation like that because mm -hmm. you know. Like you said, you know, thank God that they dealt with this pretty quick. They, they figured out what happened because there's so many angles, I guess, on the cameras. But they didn't let it fester and riots and cities get burned down and all this nonsense. So thank you for coming on the show. Please, you, like, please hit like, subscribe, check out Ignacio's books. We're going to be talking here real soon about the State of the Union address with Biden and the fact that uh, it's pretty evident the man's slipping into serious mental decline aside from – if you don't like his political decisions, there's other issues going on with him. And uh, we're going to have Ignacio here on a second show discussing that. Thank you for joining us. It's this, this important issue about police brutality and proper procedures. And this is an informative channel. We thank you for joining. Please hit like and subscribe. Check out Ignacio's books in the description. All the links are there. Ignacio, thanks for coming on this show. Thanks, Bill. Look, enjoyed it. Thank you.